Coming up on today's episode... A good Sunday morning to you all, YouTube. Here with you at the bench once again. This is not an Android head unit in front of you, though. I think you can tell that. Most people can tell that. And what this is, is a, the item that I bought on eBay last week. Uh, when I say last week, I mean this week. <laughs> this is, well, no, I take that back. This is Sunday, so that's supposed to, actually the traditional beginning of the week is Sunday. So, anyway, whatever. Um, <laughs> I did buy this on eBay. Picked it up for $5. Not bad, not bad at all. Uh, you know, can't complain about that. Uh, according to the um, person that sold it, and I don't remember exactly what he said, but he's, I think he said the radio worked okay, but the clock didn't. And that is pretty much it. It is plugged in right now, by the way. Um, I, uh, I I plugged this in previously when I first got it just to see if it was met the same criteria that he said. And... Like I said, it did. It seemed to. So let's turn the radio on. And a little volume, maybe. I think we're on FM. I believe. Now, it doesn't have an FM antenna. Let me put an FM antenna on it. All right, now we have an FM antenna hooked up to it. As you can see, that I think on it on the top there, a yellow wire coming out. That's hooked up to one of the uh, terminals of the FM antenna connection point and let's see what we have now let's turn it on first oh yeah there we go that appears to be the Bloomington station that's our local station I think they do a Sunday service on all Sundays That is probably the hum. Pork chops, pork burgers, sausages. That's a uh, ninety-six point three. Um, I can't ever think of the name of it. From Hackman Family Farm Market and a wide variety of products produced by local. But anyway, all the uh, main stations work. Let's go back up to one hundred six. You name it. They can take your pavement powder That's 106. and make it the rig of your dreams. Line X so let's, uh, let's go to AM now and see what now. The other day when I was sitting in the living room, um, this thing had pretty good reception. I know I got picked up two stations in there. Of course, the... Um, Michael's... You talked about villains. Are you saying that a villain is our bad, that, local that station? Some good in everyone. The buzz. That is certainly a. So that's, uh, I believe, WHAS 84 out of Louisville, I believe. But anyway, it does pick up pretty good now. So the radio does function very well now. That's up all the way. So obviously it's suffering some uh, loss of capacitor, capacity <laughs> in its uh, coupling caps. So we're going to have to go through and troubleshoot that. And we'll replace the uh, filter caps as well. Um, you know, that just goes without saying these days. Also on this, now, um, I had, like I said, I've already uh, confirmed that the clock didn't work. And Brendan, you may remember him. Uh, we have, uh, people have talked about him in our little circle of uh, viewers and uh, electronics people. Um, I talked to him, I, you know, I won't say every day, but uh, quite a bit uh, via email and uh so he had mentioned at one time that he had a, a almost surefire method 
to uh, bring these clocks back to life. And uh, I thought, well, you know, uh, <laughs> I haven't had that success on mine. The ones I've tried to fix, I just about, I think maybe one out of all of the I've tried maybe worked, and it didn't work long. <laughs> so um, I asked him if he wouldn't mind taking a look at it if I take it out and, and ship it to him, and he agreed to do that. And so uh, I'm going to do that, and uh, that is going to be coming up. Uh, you know, uh, we'll have a, a report back from him on what he did to it once that happens and reinstall it. Also, this face. Now, there's a couple of cosmetic issues on this radio. I'm going to move you over here a little bit. You can see this here is pretty bad shape. There's a big gash out of here, gash out of here, and I'm thinking... This is just my thoughts on this. If I had a very thin piece of something to stick behind that to where it would be, you know, I could I could put some filler in there or something like that and then basically, you know, build it up to where it needs to be out here and then just sand it off or sand it down or whatever you want to call it and go that route with to fill these in and maybe try to repair that. I don't know for sure. I'm not that good on cabinet repair. But if anybody has any ideas better than that, let me know. I'm all ears, as they say. Uh, this part here is just, it's the same thing as the headlights. <laughs> and in fact, I think that's what I'm going to try on this, is the headlight restore method. This is just, um, I don't know, uh, dull, whatever you want to call it. But it's not clear anymore. And uh, I'm going to try to take this off and see if I can't use some kind of buffer or something like that on it. Maybe, like I said, even the uh, headlight restore kit that I've got still for left from when I did my headlights. Um, I'm sure it's probably a different kind of plastic, but at the same time, I know the Novus products, they work pretty good for this. Uh, but I, I figure if I can get something to work without having to buy another whatever, uh, that would be money in my pocket. <laughs> so... Um, the uh, only thing I've got to do is get the back off. I did a preliminary look at it. Let's see. Let's turn it around and let's show it to you. All right. What you see in the back here is basically there's some tabs here that uh, I believe that's probably the circuit board, I'm guessing, sticking through there. Um, not sure if that holds it in or what, but there are tabs up at the top, as you can see. And then there's this knob here. Now, this knob, I believe, is supposed to... Uh, loose or unloosen from the um, actual. This is way how you turn the, the uh, dial or not the dials, but the hands of the clock to set the time and the alarm. You push it in to set the alarm, and uh, there you go. So you push in, set alarm set, push pull out for time set. But there has to be a way to get this off, at, you know, because uh, I'm thinking that this knob comes off, but I'm not really sure about that. Uh, that's just the rounded uh, cover or something on that. That's not even a, a, what do you call it? So let me see if I can get a hold of the uh, shaft itself with a, a pair of pliers. And I'm wondering if that shaft, the whole thing doesn't connect and come off of that shaft at one time. Because it looks like if you look in there, I think there's a, it gets smaller in there. Let me, let me get something to work on this with. So what I'm going to do basically is hold on to this this and see if I can turn this to unloosen that knob. I think I'm just turning the whole thing. Pretty sure. I know you guys are not seeing what I do. Let me uh, let me see if I can get this out and I'll bring you back and show you when I get it out because this, I don't want to do all this on camera because it's going to take too long. So hang on. Uh, I'll be back in a, hair, in a hair or two. All right. Well, we are back once again. Let's put you over this way just a hair more. Uh, I think you can see everything where I'm seeing, close to it anyway. A lot of dust in there, a lot of dust. And this did have a, a, a sleeve on it, I guess is what you'd call it, and screws from the shaft. Uh, you had to get a hold of the actual shaft up here with the pliers, and once I got this top off, I could reach in there with the pliers and hold the shaft while I turned this off, and that came off easily then. So that's not a bad deal there. I think that'll be easy to get out and send off to Brandon. That's good. Um, the rest of this, you can see here's our antenna wires here. There's a big wad of fluff. 
dust, whatever you want to call it, dust bunny, I guess. Um, there's the main filter cap. We'll obviously replace that. So I don't see anything wrong with the way it, it works as far as the radio is concerned, so I'm not going to do a lot with that. But I am going to have to take out the chassis to get to all of the stuff that uh, I've got to take out. The, the clock's got to come out. A clock is not dirty, surprisingly. I was kind of surprised that it wasn't, but it's not. So, hoping I can get that glass out off, or plastic, I should say. Speaker looks good from this side, anyway. Uh, so, you know, everything looks good. Output transformer, uh, tuning capacitor, um, loop stick. Everything looks just fine, except for the, all the dust. There's the output transform or transistor. Here's, our, of course, our interlock. That finally came off after I got underneath of it and pried it a little bit. But, uh, like I say, there's a, a good look at it. Um, and uh, I, I, that's what I'm going to do next to see if I can't separate the chassis from the cabinet. And then I'm going to take knobs off, I'm sure. I am think that's because you can see it slides out this way and this way over here. I'm pretty sure that's all that is to it, and I'll have to probably uh, remove this. Um, well, I don't have to remove it, but unsolder them or something. I, I don't like when they when they do the. Uh, you guys are not even seeing what I'm seeing, but I'm talking about these wires for the antenna, or FM antenna. Uh, they're soldered on, so now they do. I believe these do press out. You just press them through the cabinet, but that really doesn't. I don't think that's going to solve our problem. I don't think. So I'll check into that while I'm taking the uh, part of the, uh, what do you call it? Once I get the chassis out, I'll take my, my brush and air and things like that and clean it out as much as I can. And my primary goal here is to get this clock out and get that plastic, off the clear plastic off the front of it. Looks like it's got, I don't know if that's a light. I think that's a light there. And uh, figure out how I got to go about getting that out. Now I see, I think I can see, but of course, you know, I, I don't think the whole thing is going to come out. In fact, I know it's not. But the motor itself is held on, but you see that little chrome chrome colored rod going across the bottom there. That that just comes out of its slots, and then it lifts, or the top slots are just slide in, and it will slide out then, I'm pretty sure. So, that's that. Uh, all this junk in there, you know how that works. But anyway, uh, take that out and get that sent off to uh, Brandon. And so he can work on that. So, All right, let me get this apart and we'll come right back. All right, well, what we we did, we got it out. The main thing was, I guess, getting it out. Uh, besides the uh, taking the knobs off, there was actually two screws in the uh, chassis as well. One located here between the uh, controls. The other one was located here on top of the uh, um, tuning capacitor. Got those both out and then it slid right out. Now, I did get the uh, clock out also. It was not too hard to get out. I got the uh, face plate and the uh, dial all out. As you can see here, all the face plates good, good shape. Um, so all that works out pretty good. Happy about that clock came out without any incidents. Now, I do want to document this a little bit. So, uh, basically, what I'm going to do is take my pointer and let me get on the... So, this wire here is AC for the clock motor. And if we look over here, this wire here is that wire. Now, on the other side, it's a white wire. As you can barely see it. I've got it tilted right there. And this is the wire that goes there. Now, the only other wire is the brown wire up here. That's to switch the power to the radio. And that radio and wire is up, up here. Get up a little higher so you can see it. Here. So that's that right wire right there. And the other two, as I outlined below. Now, the rest of them I'm going to leave on there because they go with the clock. I mean, they don't have to come off. I did put the knobs back on in case he needs to turn something on or something like that. Um, not a problem. Uh, gears don't look too dirty. Now there's some fuzz in there I see, but uh, not sure. 
Uh, anyway, this is the motor. This is obviously what's not working. So I'm hoping Brenda can bring that back alive. Uh, this has a, I believe, 110 or uh, AC uh, bulb in it because it's it's wired directly to the, well, I say directly. It actually goes to a coil there. I think there's a coil around it, and it comes off the other side. So maybe it's not a, a direct 110 or 120 or what do you want to call it. Uh, don't know for sure. Uh, all that is secured by this wire tie here, whatever. I'll leave that alone. I don't think the uh, light works. I'll have to replace the bulb. But uh, there you go. There's a look at the clock. This is. I'm gonna send this whole thing to Brendan, and he can deal with that as he pleases. But I'm also. I took pictures of this. I'm gonna illustrate those, and, and just in case he wouldn't know what's what. I know he knows, though. He's dealt with enough stuff like this. So he knows this is the AC for the motor because that's the only two poles, and this other one has to be the power for the clock, because that's the only thing that goes over to the clock. Or, I'm sorry, the radio. Not the clock, this is the clock. <laughs> I'll get it right. But anyway, so that's it in a nutshell. Doesn't seem too complicated. And as far as the uh, circuit board is concerned, definitely had some dust bunnies living here. So... I've got my little brush. I want to brush it out and uh, try to get some of these wires out of the way. But I don't want to mess them up too much so I'll know where they go. All the uh, antenna wires, I did that, that the same way. Let's see here. I marked one on black, and the other white, and uh, I will solder those back onto the back of the antenna. Same with the speaker wires. Mark the black. I, I don't know how you can see that, but. It's already got a red mark on the, I guess, the positive side or whatever. Uh, and then I marked the other one black, and that way I'll know it goes there. And that will work for that. I'm not going to bother taking, I don't think there's any sense in taking out the speaker. Uh, I don't think. If I have cause to, I might, but I don't think I'm going to bother with it. As I mentioned before, this uh, clock come out pretty easy. Just take this, these... Uh, catches off of the this part here on each side and you guys not seeing that I don't think you are anyway this uh, wire here gets on these catches here or this one here and this one here and that's that holds that against the, the clock to where it can't come out and so when that's done that way I gotta get that back in there before I lose that I got there it goes. So that goes in there like that. And like I said, it comes up, catches the bail, bail catches that, and it slides in the top where they're they're captive anyway, so that's that. Um I did have one uh casualty, but it's not a big deal. Uh, a little epoxy will fix that up. And uh, that is over here in the front. Let me get your radio out of the chassis out of the way. When I was trying to get the faceplate out, I guess I put too much pressure on that, but I have the piece. And it's just a matter of uh, putting it back in as it came out and gluing it. As you can see, once it's glued in there and pressed in good, it won't, won't even show. So, not a problem. Not a problem at all. Uh, not near as there's a crack here I didn't notice before. Put some epoxy on that as well. Uh, but again, the other thing is that one on the front there. I, I, again, if you have a suggestion on how to do that the best way, again, my idea is just basically put a, a, a business card or something like that uh, underneath of it and then fill it in with some kind of plastic filler. I do have some body filler coming for plastic I was going to use on the uh, uh, head unit, but ended up not using it or not needing it. But it's coming anyway, so I'll have it. And I could probably use it up there, so... That's the case on that one. So uh, let me uh, clean this up just a little bit, and I'll come back and show you the re end result. And then for the next part, you know, the next time I get in here and work on it, which probably won't be today, obviously, but uh, the next time I get in here and work on it, um, I'll go ahead and replace the uh, filter capacitor, which I think I already showed you, but I'll check and show you again. That's just a little big, little big thing here. I think it's a two-section at least. Uh, 100 microfarad and 70 microfarad. It, whatever the line voltage is. I'll put 160s back in, probably. 
can't make it out. Not anyway, I'll look at it closer. But there's just two sections of that, so that should be easy to fix. Easy, easy, easy. And you know, like I say, you get some compressed air going here, and uh, I'll take the uh, brush first. Do a little brushing on the old machine here. It is mainly just dusty, but like I said, still needs to be cleaned out. Oh yeah. Not not good, not good at all. But it cleans up pretty easy. What I can't get with the brush, I'll get with the air. Spray a little air, just see what it does. Oh, if I can get to it without killing everybody. Oh yeah, see air. Air works great. All right, we'll do that. The rest of it and. Uh, call that good and then once we get it all cleaned off we can go ahead and start replacing things now the caps are for the uh, I don't have a uh, circuit board or circuit board circuit diagram for this so I'm gonna have to kind of guess based on the volume control and things like that I'm gonna guess because that is the volume control up here that that is our coupling cap for it right there and that's the one that usually goes on these transistor radios when uh, when the volume gets low, you can just almost almost be sure this is the one that's the messed up. So uh, that one's what we'll do. Now there's not too many of them here. I may just go ahead and try to replace them all. That might be the best course of action. That way they're all. I see three. I only see three. One, two, and a third one over there. Unless there's some underneath there in that dust, I'm not seeing. That's a possibility. You know that. Let's spray that a little bit. And see. I'm going to move you guys out of the way a little bit here. I blew my, my little straw off. Can't have that. another can of that. I think I'm about out of that one. <laughs> Handy stuff. Alright, let's get back over here so you can see a little bit better now. There you go. That's a little bit better. Everything's visible now. Like I said, I only see three of those. So, oh, there's one behind the other one. I see it now. You may see it now too. So that's one, two, three, four. But still, that's not bad. Four in the uh, filter cap. That should be doable. I would think. We'll just replace them all. They'll all be new. They'll all be good. It works for me. See there's some there's some actual grease on that too. I don't know how you're seeing that, but so that's gonna have to be cleaned off a little bit better. I'll use some alcohol for that. Clean that off. We want our heat sink to be free from debris, that way it heat or it, it sinks better. <laughs> I guess that's the best way to put it. Uh, several uh, carbon cop resistors in here. I don't know if they're bad. I can check a few of them. I'm not going to check them all because wh what it lacks in um, electrolytic capacitors, it makes up for in resistors. What it looks like to me, anyway. So, I think that's going to do me. Like I said, I believe that is it. We are going to uh, find me some capacitors, and I have to order some. I, I'm, I haven't ordered none for a long time, so I may need to do that. That uh, 
I think that dial needs to be readjusted a little bit because I, I noticed when I was tuning it, it's, it's not quite on the money. Of course, it's just a wire going across there and it's probably bent and everything else. So, Not a big deal. It can be fixed. It will be fixed. So that's going to do me and get some of this dust out of here. Uh, that's going to do me. Like I say, if you guys have a... a, a and I don't know if this is going to be a complete video or not, but if you guys have suggestions on that front piece, that edge, uh, better than what you think mine will work, by all means, please let me know. I am no expert at all when it comes to cabinets and cabinet repair. So if you have a better idea for this, basically all I want to do is match this edge over to the corner and fill in, of course, the missing parts here. Where it looks like a, you know, as far as the paint or the uh, color of it, um, of course, the closer to the original would be better, but you know, you can, uh, some of that filler allows you to you mix paint in it or pigments or something into it to get a different color. I don't know. Uh, one of the other things I thought about, and if I had some plastic like this color, put those, like I said, the business card on that side and uh, something on this side to uh, basically hold the pressure on this side and then basically use some plastic uh, melted with uh, whatever uh, uh, candle or you know whatever and just let it drop in here and of course I don't think that would actually it, I'd have to sand it down but you know until it gets up even with you know with with the liquid it would probably come up even that way I don't know just just some thoughts on it and I did a little searching on uh, Google for plastic repair. There's a lot of different methods out there to do it. So, All right, like I said, I've blabbed on long enough. You guys have a great day. Thank you so, so very much for watching, and we will see ya. Uh -huh.